just so along. Let's wait for some of you to join. Those of you that are joining live, um, we'll wait for you to fill up the room, the chat, before I go any further. I'm, of course, here in my uni dress, wearing this first time since I walked from a holiday, actually. Loving it. Very comfortable and easy to wear. Really is. Um, I don't think we've got very much of this fabric left. It's the petite lemons. Um, but we've got another lemon fabric in. So, yeah. Um, I know some of you have, have ordered this so you can make your own. So if you're joining, say hi. Let's see who's here. We've got the lovely Jemima answering your questions today. So if you have any questions, do pop them in the chat and Jemima will answer them. Hi, Sarah. Um, I've got my glasses on today because I mean business. I've got a lot of things that I'm planning for us to get through. Hi, Fiona. Hi, Carmen. Hello. Right. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Lorianne. So, um, what I want to try and do is finish the Una. Now, I'm not saying do the hem, but I thought that given that this is the one of the easiest patterns I've done on a sew along for a long time, I thought it'd be really good if we could finish it. So this could be a nice resource um, on our YouTube channel for people to refer back to. So I'm gonna try and do that, which means it might go on a bit longer. Obviously, you don't need to stay with me live for the whole time if you've got stuff to do, but we'll just see how we get on, okay? So um, the Una is a new pattern. It's just come out in uh, June. It's a PDF pattern. Um, links to it going up, I'm sure, and fabrics as well. Um, I am going to be making mine. You may have seen on Instagram. I put it up there because um, I'm very excited about how much fabric I needed. Hi, Sal. Um, so I'm making out of this lovely check, which um, I think has been overlooked a bit. And I'm surprised that we got it in for the um, vintage dreaming ebook, but we didn't, um, we did, it didn't sell and it, it looked lovely on um, Janine. Well, it didn't, it did sell, but it didn't sell all of it. So there's still some left. I think there's about six meters left. So there's not loads left, but I've pinched a bit of that. And I managed to cut my size 10 with a slight grading to 12 at the hip out of 1.12 meters. So really not very much. I proper fudged it around and I put it up on Instagram so you can see what I did. Um, the other option I was gonna do is out of this fabric, but I've hung it up, put this on the mannequin here. And I thought, well, you know, the Miriam's actually not too dissimilar. And so I didn't want another dress that's similar in that fabric. So that's why I've decided to do this. Um, so I have done a little bit of prep. I've got all my interfacing on already. I've just realized though, I didn't get myself my pencil and ruler for drawing my darts. So just bear with me. I'm just gonna get my pattern master where I would put it. I think it's just up there. That pattern master on the path basket there. Great. And a pen. Pink, maybe the pink one. Sorry everyone. I thought I was so organized. Just the pink um marking pen that's in that there. Fab. Thank you. One bit of prep I didn't do, typical. So, um, right, so what you want to do before you get started, you're going to do your interfacing, you've got to do your um, um, marking of your waist channel, which is not very clear to see on here, but I have got two chalk lines um, that are marking where the waist channel will go on the wrong side. So make sure you've got that um, prepped because you want to have those um, ready and done like that. And then the other thing that I didn't do is mark my dart. So I'm just gonna quickly do that. I marked where the point of my dart was, but I did not mark the line. So I'm just gonna draw those in now. Um, with a pink pen, which I won't be able to see. Wonderful. <laughs> I can see it a little bit, it's fine. So when I made this lemon dress, I did make it, I think in an hour and a half. So, I'm gonna, but that was including the hem and obviously not cutting out and not chatting. <laughs> so we'll just see how far I can get along. But unfortunately we've got a photo shoot next week so I couldn't do a second part two of this. So I thought it'd just be nice if I can do as much as I can in this one. So let's start by doing our uh, darts. 
And I should also say that I have not, um, there they are. I have not gonna do pockets because I don't like pockets in a straight fitting dress. I feel like they just add bulk and I wouldn't use them um, to the act bulk at the hip in my opinion, but I know that I am often quite alone in this opinion, so I'm not going to be um, um, continually dissing the pockets. Hi Noelia. Um, so just that point there, and then I'm just gonna pin this dart, making sure that the pen lines line up. Um, so we haven't had a sew along in a while, have we? Because we had the big sew off, and I think we all needed to recover from that. <laughs> Certainly I did. 24 hours of chatting and sewing um, on a live stream. So I, um, I don't know if we've announced yet, actually, how much we've raised, but we've raised almost, have we? No, almost £10,000. Just a bit low, around £9,000. Amazing, the big sew-off. Um, basically, the Just Given page that we had the donations, that's automatically just goes to mind. So, um, yeah. But we also obviously got some from the samples as well. Very exciting. Oh, you two wouldn't like, that's great to know. I've got another anti-pocket friend on a straight dress. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm now going to just pin the other side, get that lined up. There was something like this, like chewing gum or something, and glue in this pin pot. my hair was going to get too hot it gets really muggy in here in the afternoon because we're on the sixth floor and even though I've got the window open it is hot and I didn't have a hair I didn't have a hair bubble so I made this quickly before I started and thought oh, if I get too hot and how long did that take me all of five minutes so I thought I'd put my hair up get out of the way oh I have to say I'm loving having long hair but it is annoying when it's hot and it's down right Okay, so let's sew those darts. Now I've got my stitch length at stitch length three. I'm gonna use the middle of the presser foot to line up with uh, the pen line that I've just done on the dart. And away I go. Do a nice little reverse. Can't work out if it's easier to do this without these. No, it's not. I have actually got quite good eyesight, but I, my eyes get tired and um, at the moment I am finding that wearing my glasses is quite nice. And now I didn't do a reverse at the end there, I just did a, came off to, with the ties, I'm just doing a nice little knot where I push the knot down to the fabric. Look what Rosie's bought us as well. She treated us to some snips. How many sew-alongs have I done with uh, annoying giant fabric scissors to cut threads? <clears throat> so many. And I think Rosie's like, I think for the sew-off, the sew we, we, we deserve to have some uh, special snips. <clears throat> Given that we are a sewing company, we should have all the best equipment. <laughs> Push that down. Okay, I'm now just going to quickly jump on the iron and just press those darts down. Now I'm going to try and follow the instructions, but because it's such a simple dress, apart from when we're putting the waist channel on, you can do things in slightly different order. So if you want to batch make your well, batch make, make both your straps and that you know at this stage you can and put them to one side or the ties if you're doing that version i'm going to do version one i'm doing the elasticated version because i think that the uh this fabric's just a little bit too rigid for um the tie version it's not rigid but it's 
just in my opinion, on the, I think it would look better with the elasticator on. If it was a softer cotton lawn, I think the ties would look nice. And in the photo shoot, the ties that Rosie did are, um, uh, it was like a viscose linen, so there was some softness to it. Okay, so that is the front done. And we're now, I'm just gonna now do some overlocking, noisy overlocking, um, and I'm going to overlock the edges with the overlocker that is not plugged in. <laughs> just bear with me. <laughs> I just plug it in down here. Okay. So I'm going to overlock down those edges. I'm going to try not to shave anything off because we need to use the seam allowance as reference later. So just down both of those edges. Now, if you don't have an overlocker, you could just go uh, use a zigzag stitch or you could um, use pinking shears. Sorry, it's hard for me to chat when I'm doing this. And just come round that little, the side slit. We need to still do that. Just pivot round. Sometimes you need to move the... Uh, sometimes you'll need to kind of lift the presser foot up so that you can navigate on the overlocker around that corner there. One done, three to go. Um... I said that really enthusiastically, didn't I? So I will try and chat if you can hear me. Because I feel like four long scenes like this is going to be a bit boring without the chatting. Um, so before I came on, I started this live um, so long, I was having a think about hacks for you. And I know that I think one of our pattern insiders um, um, has done a hack where she's put a little sleeve frill on and it looks lovely. Um, oh great, you can hear me, that's good. <laughs> it's louder, isn't it, for me? <laughs> for me for um, and I now have want to make a hack of Luna with the poppy play suit trousers, make it into a jumpsuit. And I'm gonna do that in a viscose. So I thought I might do that today if I've got ch a chance, because I was meant to be sewing some more samples for the shoot, but we don't need to now. So I've got a little bit of extra spare time. Um, and I thought it'd be interesting to see how that could work. We were trying to work out if um, that would be better or with, so with Poppy Play Suit or we're thinking the Ultimate Clots, but the Ultimate Clots is quite fitted. And although you just wouldn't stitch the darts in, I still think there wouldn't be enough there. Um, so the other thing I thought could look nice is if you wanted to make the in a more kind of maybe medium weight fabric, you could do it with the Farrah, so the Farrah trousers, and you could make it quite utilitarian, so you wouldn't have to necessarily put the patch pockets on, but I think that could look nice in like a khaki canvas type. Lots of options. Okay, one more to go. actually came in yesterday and one that she'd made out of a viscose that looked lovely and she'd made in version one um, so with the elasticated waist um, but you can also um, I think the thing is with that the only thing to expect is it isn't going to like the neckline won't sit maybe quite as well I think maybe the neckline might need staying in viscose you might need to use some kind of stay tape 
just because that kind of sharpness of that is best in cotton because that holds the structure and these don't collapse. But you could always actually lightly interface these straps. There's another option. Um, if you wanted a bit more structure on your uh, on your straps so they didn't collapse. Ah, have you made one, Noelia? Sorry, I missed that. People, when it came out, it's been very, very popular, this dress, and people have, like, made two already within the weekend. I think as well, because it doesn't need that much fabric, a lot of people can um, just attack their stash pile. I think they'll probably have something um, that they could make it out of. Okay. Oh, hello, Celia. Now, there we go. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to take my back piece. And I'm going to join them at one side seam. Now it doesn't matter which side seam. Um, but it's just so that we can then have it open. I'm just looking for my right side, wrong side, which should be obvious to me because there, there's darts. Um, and on this side, it should be obvious because the channels are marked. There we go. So big pieces here, just joining up. Um, you're making your third. Oh. Amazing. Or was that a third Esma? I can't see. Yeah. Oh, a skirt and a top instead of a dress. Nice. I tell you, the, the uh, Una fever has hit the office because um, we're all sort of started to wear, come in with ours, and I think Jemima's now want, feeling left out of the Una Club. So she's going to, she's already started making one. Um, now what's going on there I've just got a little bit of it's a bit different there so you should have notches at the side seams that line up just checking where mine are annoyingly I've overlapped over them um there we go I'm just going to just pin down here as well because there's nothing stretching, but I just want to check that that's all lining up. Yep, it's fine. So I've actually, I always think when you've got a check thing and if you've cut those out um, so that, you know, you're pattern lined, you actually don't need notches because you can just use the, the pattern on the fabric. So I'm just, yeah, checking in along a few places. And when I pattern match, I will pin a lot more than I would if it was just not pattern matched. Oh, there's 69 of you. That's busy. It's a busy one. I guess because we haven't done one in a while. Is anyone sewing right now? Is anyone sewing Una right now? I know it'll be too early for those of you on the west coast of America or too uh, late for those of you in Australia. What are the people in Europe doing? Okay, right, that is now pinned. I am now going to, I do think it can suit all body shapes actually. Yeah, we, I completely agree with that. Um, so we're now going to stitch that side seam, centimetre and a half seam allowance, fine, it's of an inch, nice little reverse at the beginning. I shouldn't actually, I should have checked, I am doing it in the order of instructions, in case anyone has got the instructions and they're thinking, hang on a second, yes, because I'm not doing, I am, um, because I'm not doing the pockets, I've obviously uh, missed that stage, but... Just chilling out after a day's work. That's that's all right. It's ten o'clock there. Fair dues. Oh yeah, 
you've got some fabric ready for an Una. Ah, and for a V-neck Betty, nice. We do forget about all these lovely other patterns like Betty. Good old Betty. I haven't made a Betty, well, since the sew-off, but I haven't made a Betty for myself in ages. She's one of the first children of so ever it's Betty. She's got overlooked by all the new children. So we're just gonna stop at that circle point. Just above the uh, just where the side slit is. bras wow i'm impressed i would really like to sew a bra especially after the sewing bee I, that made me think i might get a bra kit um because then you could choose your own kind of lace and oh gosh yeah it'd be really nice um right i'm now going to press that open um i don't know why i turned that down you can kind of see me i am just here so i'm pressing it open and then what we do is when we press it open down the seam, we're also going to press it open where the side slit is. Ooh, steaming up. Okay, so it looks like that. Okay, then we've got to also press on our tar on our waist uh, channel. We've got to press those. So that's gonna. I'll try and do it as quickly as possible. It's a centimeter and a half over. So fold over a centimeter and a half. Till I just turn you. Here I am. So a centimetre and a half here. And obviously if you're not sure what a centimetre and a half looks like, then you can just check with your tape measure. Oh, I love working with cotton. Isn't cotton a dream? When you haven't worked with cotton for a while and then you make something cotton, you're just like, oh, it's just so nice. And even though it's, you know, a beginner fabric, just because you're not a beginner doesn't mean you can't, enjoy the ease of working with cotton best thing about this time of year cotton clothes comfy to wear easy to sew nice to iron easy to cut out there we go Come back got a little view of london there out the window okay so how am i going to pin this with all these machine, these things on here. I think I'll see if I can just tilt you down a bit more. You can see a little bit more of what I'm doing now on the table. So now what we've got to do is we've got to pin the channel in. It's much easier to do this without the whole dress being kind of in the round, as it were, so fully um, stitched up. So. We've got a nice markings to use so line it up with your markings i find it easier if you sort of line it up to the top one it just wants to sit just over that if you line it up just with the top one then um uh and then you can just sort of see rather than sort of trying to line up with the bottom and the top at the same time just line up with one of them and obviously just check that that it's lining up on both. It's annoying, that seems to have moved. There we go. So, and I'm just putting my pins in parallel because I want to have, I want them to be easy to take out as we get along. Um, so make sure as you're going over the um, side seam that obviously you press those seams open, but just keep that in that position. 
and then moving on to the back. glue on the end of these pins, no, nope. throw it on the floor. Oh, bye Noelia, got to go with you. Um, so when I first, when we first designed this, when I first designed this, I had a much wider channel in there. I had, I think, two inch elastic in there. And, you know, in my head, it looked amazing. In reality, it did not. It looked too bulky. And we sort of thought if you had a, a full bust, it would just really just shorten that too much. So it shows you, you try these things and you think things that, you know, are gonna work. Um, and then in reality, when you test them out, they don't always. And I think it was, yeah, it was what the, I made the black sample, that's right. And it was on that one. And I think at the shoot, we just got away with it by putting a belt on me. I don't think you could tell. But that was the first one that I made. And I was like, it just doesn't look right with this size elastic. It's the size elastic that we use in the Farrah jumpsuit, which really works for that. But for whatever reason, it didn't work for this. Probably because it's got a low neck, this. And, but the low neck shortens the, um, kind of the bodice, if you think, sort of visually. Right, that's pinned. Now, we don't want to do the ends, the last 15 centimetres. So if you just put a vertical pin at the ends, in fact, that one's here too far, um, then you know that's, that you're stopping there um, and you're not going to sew along there. So then we're going to edge stitch. Now, if you wanted to, you could pop an edge stitch foot on. I'm just going to, actually, maybe I should. I do love an edge stitch foot. Let me see if I've got one here to hand. If not, I was just going to use my needle position to get it right. So you want to be sewing two to three millimetres from the edge, from the folded edge of the waist channel. Yes, I have. Oh. So I don't know why I enjoy working with stitching an edge foot to stitch foot so much, but I really do. I find it so satisfying. So satisfying. And as you, some of you who've been watching these for a long time will know my love affair with the edge stitch foot. Only started in lockdown. I'd never used one before then. Didn't trust them. So we're gonna have a bit of an awkwardness of, of lots of fabric, but that's fine. Mm. Ooh, what is that there? That looks like there's something going wrong with this edge stitch foot. my needle across something wrong with this machine and the needle is not moving across what is going on there we go moved across now I sometimes think if when you're trying to move your needle position if your needle is kind of lowered too much it doesn't kind of move and you've got to just raise the needle up and it sort of hops across Hope that makes sense. <laughs> what is now oh, okay? I'm slightly worried there's something wrong with this foot, so let's just see if it's no, we're fine. We'll do, we'll do a little reverse. It's like using a concealed zip foot with this uh, edge stitch foot because you can kind of just relax that you're getting it in the right position and you don't have to do anything else. So the reason why we're leaving the ties, the, the waist channel unstitched is because we need to finish those ends of the waist channel neatly. Um, and of course we need to get the elastic in as well and close the, um, the seam allowance on the other side. Ow! 
vicious. Pin, stab me. How are we doing for time? Oh, half an hour. Oh, thanks, Lorianne. They've been professionally done. I could not have nails like this myself. Good old shellac. We've got a nail bar near where I live. That um, when I used to go, out, they used to do children's <laughs> children's hands as if they need to have manicures, but basically so that the mums would feel like they could bring their kids in. Um, they would do the children's hands for free if they were under five, I think. So Jazzy would come with me and get her nails done. I mean, they'd paint them in like five minutes. Um, and then she'd go and do something in the chip or whatever. But it meant that she, I would be like, you want to come get your nails done, please? Because <laughs> I want to get mine done. <laughs> um, very clever of them to know that that's, that would mean that mums would come more. But one time I let Jazzy, I can't remember what it was, a couple of months ago, I let Jazzy decide on my nail polish. Never again. She chose like, well, my hands look like frozen hands. They had like glittery Elsa nails for two weeks and I had a photo shoot for Prima which was um, where I had my column Prima magazine and like now I've got like all of these projects that have been shot with my frozen hands vertical pin. Just let it go, Lisa. Ha ha! <laughs> okay, so that is now on. Can you see? Lovely waist channel now on. So um, the next thing is we need to join these and then we need to do the side seam. So um, I mean, you could do them at different, I'm just thinking, could you, which would be easier? Yeah, actually, let's do the side seams. It'd be easier to do that first. Um, doesn't really matter. I'm not sure which way around we're saying the instructions. Let's do that side seam. So we need to make sure that they're out the way. So you could always pin those out the way if you're worried they're going to get caught in, because we don't want them to get caught in. So just pin the other side seam in exactly the same way. You've got your notches to help you line up. I've got my nice check marks. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. A right angle pin. That's clearly been in a fabric bolt. We use the pins to kind of keep the fabric bolts together sometimes, not necessarily every, all this, but it shows um, to keep them tidy. And that's what's happened to that one. So like I said, we've got a photo shoot next week. So we try and do a photo shoot every two, three months, about three months it's best if we can. And we do a batch of our patterns at the same time. Um, and uh, yeah, so we've, got in that shoot we've got I think we're shooting three one two three new things yeah something for stitch school and two new things um so it's always nice and we've got our lovely Chloe who you probably haven't yet seen um but we've got um Chloe who joined the team a few months ago she's going to be modeling for us which is very exciting and she's also very excited which is great um, it's always great though if you're using someone in the team as a model because they're around for fittings which makes it so much easier i think actually we're shooting another thing as well because we've got another pattern that we're extending the size of 
I can't tell you which, but yeah. I know we've sort of had a bit of a stall on that, on extending the sizes, but we are still continuing to do that. So we've got another one coming out. We're shooting that um, on in the kind of plus size, so you can see it in that shape or size range. And then on Wednesday, I'm very excited. So you may not know, but our wonderful Nicole um, is leaving. She has been trying to move to Canada, Canada for a long time, um, but the pandemic got in the way. Um, and she's finally now going, um, and she's incredibly, incredibly exciting. She's going to be going, I'm not quite sure actually where in Canada, on the West Coast. Um, be incredibly sad, we've been incredibly sad to lose her because Nicole's been with us for years, um, six years maybe, something like that, seven years, a long time. And um, yeah, she's yeah, she's been great. But anyway, because she's leaving, we're having a bit of a team day on Wednesday next week. So keep an eye on Instagram because I'm sure we'll be putting some fun fun stuff up there. But we're going to um, I'm just gonna press this open. Um, we're going to go out to one of those escape room places where it's a bit like those of you in the UK, like Crystal Maze type vibe, where you've got an hour to get out of a room and work out all those puzzles. I'm absolutely awful at those sorts of things because my brain is not wired up that way. But Nicole is incredible at those, which makes sense because she's sort of got that logical problem solving um, visual brain. Um, and whilst I'd say my brain is problem solving, it's not pr problem solving in that way. I'm not very good at that kind of problem solving. Um, like pattern cutting problem solving, I think is the same sort of thing, which is what Nicole's brilliant at. Um, so yes, so we're doing that and then, very exciting, we have checked the weather forecast and it looks like it's gonna be nice, but we're then going um, to swim in Hampstead at the ponds in as many Zara bikinis or swimsuits as we could muster. Um, those of us who've got them are going to be wearing those and not that it's for that but anyway we thought we'd test them out at the ponds and then we're going to have a lovely picnic um, and play some games like rounders and stuff so yeah it'd be really really nice. Do you? You love puzzles. Ooh. I like like puzzles as in puzzle puzzles but not um kind of like solving it's those sort of they give you like a clue and then you've got to like work out and there's a dial and I don't know we did it before once and in the end I just sat outside because I felt like I was just getting in the way not helping um, right sorry I'm now chatting and not saying what I'm doing so what I've done is I've unfolded the waist um, channel at the edges there and I've lined up those short ends. I've made sure that the dress is out the way, placed them right sides together, and I'm now just gonna stitch that close. Now, ooh, do I need to check what that seam allowance is? Should be 1.5, but um, let's just check in case it's a centimeter, because that would be very annoying. Do, do, do. Yes, just says stitch in place. If it ever just says stitch and doesn't give you um, a seam allowance, it's because it's the seam allowance stated at the beginning, which is always a centimetre and a half with our patterns, or five-eighths of an inch. So you reverse the start and at the end. Okay, then we can trim those off. Now, if you want to get it on the iron, you can, and press that open, but I'm just going to finger press it open because it's a bit awkward. And then you need to fold back those edges because we're going to stitch that back down. So we still want to keep some part of the um, channel open because we've got to put our elastic in at the end, but we can um, stitch one side down completely. So I'm going to do that. And you'll have to put your hand inside the dress to make sure you're not pinning through all the layers. Oh, we've now got 98 people watching. Hello, 98 people. That's a lot. Um, so I think for the elastic, I probably just need about that much. So I don't need 
a massive gap. So just a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll close up the pole of the bottom and I'll just close up a little bit of the top of the waist channel. Got a lot of threads here as well, which are annoying me. So let's just cut those. They'll be of course on the right side, but I'll get those at once we've turned the rest through. So let's go back to our edge stitch foot. Back to my needle position. I have before. Then tuck it under. Now do obviously you've got to be super careful that you are not um, that you're not accidentally um, let's see that sorry having a moment there we go it's that way <laughs> having a moment that you're not going to accidentally catch the um, other side of the dress so you can see now this is why we put the majority of the waist channel in without um, with it flat because it's much easier to work with I think when I made this version I didn't because we didn't have the instructions then it was just making the kind of sample for the shoot and I sort of just did it intuitively where I just sewed it together and didn't think and then I was like oh waste channel so then had to put that on and it was much more fiddly especially in the smaller sizes because obviously the circumference is smaller so it's even more awkward um okay so Now, let's do this on the side. Out the way. This is the fiddliest bit of it, which, you know, it is a little bit awkward and fiddly, but it's not difficult. Um, but I think if you are a beginner, this will be the part that you might find the most challenging. and slowly obviously I'm not I'm whizzing through but you can go a lot more slowly and I should say all those when I'm saying oh I made mine in an hour and a half that's because I've been sewing a lot if you're a beginner and you do not make it in that time that is actually what you know that's fine you should enjoy the process and not feel like you have to rush rush it okay so that is now in, which is the channel, which is great. So we're not going to put the elastic in until the end, but that's now done. Um, let's go on to the oh, straps. Now I've made one, Blue Peter moment. Here's one I made earlier. I've made one already um, because I thought you don't need to see me make two. So that's boring. So I'm just going to make the other one with you. So we're folding it right sides together lengthways, and then we're just going to come down here. Oh, I've got the wrong foot on. Okay. Um, so. Centimetre and a half seam allowance again for this, so 1.5 centimetres. So 1.5, that's the same, 5 eighths of an inch. Sorry, trying to give you the imperial and the metric. Not the metric in two ways. Thank you, Dokes. Trim those off. Now, you can then trim this down so you've got a bit less bulk on the seam allowance. Yes, the pattern does come in all the sizes, size six to size 30. If you buy the PDF, well, it's only available as a PDF, but, um, and then if you want us to print the copy shop pattern, you just tell us which size range you want us to print. But yeah, you get the PDF and you get everything. So then, it's just an annoying amount. I remember thinking this, and I think I used the, safety pin which I've now hidden for myself so I thought it's quite an annoying amount like turning this through like you can turn it through but it would be quicker with a safety pin it's 
fine. I shall do it with my finger. Cotton, this is the one thing that cotton's not amazing at because it's not slippy. So turning it through is always a bit more fiddly with a cotton. Especially this cotton, it does feel like there is a dressing to it. feel my tummy rumbling. You're gonna have to hold on to tummy. I've got a dress to sew. We're not doing badly though guys, I have to say. We're making the straps. We'll put the straps in their positions and then we put the facing on. And I said we haven't actually done the sides um, stitching have we on those but on the little side slits but could maybe do that and and then leave the hem we'll see how we get on okay so now I'm going to press this with um, the seam right at the edge so just sort of roll it so that the seam sorry you can't see what I'm doing here I am you can see me a bit there so just rolling it like that so that your seam is right on the edge so you'll be hearing that siren because the windows open The soundtrack to London, a siren, unfortunately. Like that. Okay. So, um, now, I've got to put those on. I'm just going to check again um, in case I need to say we're doing it at a different order. Obviously, you're skipping the section of version two because we're not doing the tie. Um, oh, they do the facing first. They, us. Um, okay, it doesn't really matter. Let's, because I've got my straps here, we're going to do that. Um, so, we can make the facing afterwards. So, we're just going to put the straps in the right position. So, we need to turn our dress through. Have I pressed that seam? Yes, I have. Of course, I have. Turn the dress through to the right side like a big tube at the moment it doesn't really look like a dress does it and then we're going to take the straps now the angled strap goes to um, on the back so it's angling up towards the side seam and you have got I think I'll just check that I think it's just an angle towards the side seam yes um, you've got a uh, two notches that you can use to make sure you get the position correct okay so that's going to do that one and then that one got a wonky pin there okay so let's now just stitch those in place the seam allowance, we're going to machine tuck them in. So yeah, we want to machine tuck them in within the seam allowance. So let's just do them. I don't know if the neckline seam allowance is going to be a centimetre. I can't remember. Mm, no, it doesn't. Oh, we're not actually, I've just seen, we're not doing it in the wrong order. We're doing it in the same order. We have um, not yet made the facing in the booklet, so that's good. Sorry, I've just unfeathered my needle. Annoying. So the seam allowance will be 1.5 centimetres around to get that facing on. So we are going to need to just, yeah, make sure that we're within that. So now you can obviously machine tack these in, but I mean, I always just stitch them at the normal stitch length because I'm not going to unpick that. I'm going to leave that like that. Oh look, I was just a bit naughty and I sewed over a couple of pins. Shh, don't tell anyone. Lazy, lazy. I'm not reversing because it's, you know, it's going to get caught in when we do that facing. So. Now this would be a time when you can adjust the straps um, to fit you if you um, are concerned they're not going to fit um these are fine on me so i'm not going to worry about that but it definitely would be worth checking so what you can do 
is you can um, stitch the back in, pop it on, and then pin and check what the position is at the front. It's much easier to attach the back and then pull the front because then you can kind of, it's very hard to pin like that, if you know what I mean, whereas you can pin that quite easily. And then you can shorten them if you need to. Obviously, if you need to lengthen them, there's not much you can do apart from just reduce the amount, um, um, just reduce the amount of seam allowance on the straps rather than does that make sense? Um, you'd have to kind of move them down on the seam allowance a bit. Just checking you haven't twisted anything there, Lisa. No, I've not. <laughs> mm -mm. Okay, so I've got those again lined up like that. So raw edges to raw edges, just like I did at the back. And now I'm just going to stitch over those. And again, you don't really need to reverse. Oh, stitching over a pin again, whoopsie. I'm sewing them on about a centimeter seam allowance. Put those out of the way, Lisa, you're not meant to be using big scissors. And So we've got the, the straps in the positions ready. So now we just need to move on to our facing. And the facing's already interfaced because I did that before. But just to show you the position, so the curve of the front piece goes like that. So it's curving up, that's the right way around. And the back, it's slightly like that. So just join them at the side seams and then we're going to stitch them together and then we'll press those seams open and we'll overlock the bottom edge. So five eighths of an inch again. Centimetre and a half seam allowance, reversing at the start and at the end. Trim your little threads off as you go. Julie at the sew off, what is, what is that pinning Lisa? <laughs> Not lined up. Julie at the sew off um, had a little bag attached to the little carrier bag, plastic bag that she just had taped to the back, to the edge of the table. And then every so often she'd just go like that. So her area was always clean. Now, I just do that, but of course then that means you're going to have to I, uh, hoover that, um, which is what I do every time I finish sewing, but how nice if you didn't have to do that. Little tip there. We all, just, we all saw that and thought, oh, we're going to do that. Okay. So, now we just need to press those open. You pop them on there. Okay, and then put this out of the way. We're gonna go, excuse me. We're gonna now overlock along the bottom edge. to count that as full 54 minutes of sewing because I chatted, didn't I, at the beginning? I chatted for about four or five minutes. So, so far, I've sewn for 50 minutes. This is how far I've got. Um, right, so now 
we've got to keep these down out the way and then we just take the facing and we slot it on like that and then pull that and slot it on like that okay so drawing your side seams and you will also have notches on your um, facing piece to help you line up with the notches on the dress so the notches which mark the straps Yeah, and the bent one. Okay, pinned all the way around. Now let's sew all the way around. Centimetre and a half seam allowance. I'm just gonna check that, because normally it is always a centimetre, so it's making me doubt it. <laughs> da, 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 da. Right, so it's gonna that machine the notches and the seams, pin in place, stitch all the way around the neckline. It doesn't say a centimetre, so that's what we'll do. Obviously we're sandwiching in those straps when we stitch over those and keep pulling it round. Oh, it's very exciting isn't it that we've got to this stage. I do find it, I do get such a buzz from um, ah, sewing something quickly. I find it very rewarding. So that shows you that I'm definitely a result sewer, not a process crafter sewer. lucky because I'm going on another holiday in at the end of the school uh, end of July third week in July we go no fourth week in July and uh, we kept going with Jazzy this time as when the school's broken up and uh, I was still thinking oh, I've got another opportunity to be in a really hot country and have all these lovely dresses to wear but actually the weather in London now is is really really lovely um, which is great, because it means you can wear the Una. It's probably why she's been so popular in the UK this past couple of weeks. I should say, actually, like those of you that um, had maybe followed me in the past on Instagram and then stopped following me because I turned it into a kind of at least a comfort home and more interiors focus, it's now back to more lifestyle focus. So I am sharing a lot of my makes and style and things again. So um, I put up a little reel actually today um on my instagram showing you like the homemade outfits that i've made that, I, that i just sort of have worn over the past week so if you're keen to see more about that and what i'm wearing i'm still doing some interior stuff and lots of stuff on growing flowers and things um but um yeah at least a comfort on uh instagram so we now need to trim into all of these uh seams i don't know if we're Trimming it down, yeah, half the width, and then trimming it into that, yeah. In fact, 
do you know what? Trim it down, but I'm not gonna trim it down because I want to just get this done. So ideally trim yours down. Um, and then at the curvy bits, you need to clip into it. So where it's curved, clip into it at about a centimeter to two centimeter intervals. But you don't need to clip into it where it's straight. So that's just snipping up to the stitch line indefinitely, not beyond or through your lovely stitching. Okay, so then before we press it, what we're going to do is we're going to understitch it. So we're going to fold the seam allowance up towards the facing and then working from the right side, we're going to stitch on the facing side. So I always use my normal foot, I line up the groove in the foot with the seam join and then I move my needle over towards the facing side. And then you can sew um, two to three millimeters from that seam join. So as you keep going round, you sort of do a section, then stop. Make sure your seam allowance is facing upwards. Um, going round, um, almost there, and then we're gonna. I'm gonna do. I want. I'm gonna finish it, guys. I've decided. I want to properly finish it with you. So we're gonna be here to the bitter end, guys. We're gonna do the hem as well because we're so close. So we're just gonna trim those off. And now I'm going to press that in, okay? So you can see now it's starting to look like um, the Una dress. So I'm going to press this down. I'll move you so you can see me. And then I'm also going to... Um, I'm also going to press the hem up as well. Even though we haven't done our side slits, just whilst I'm here, I might as well just get that done and then that's done. Just all the way around. And what the understitch ridging will do is it will slightly roll over the top edge of the, um, of the dress at the neckline. And so that the um, outside is sort of rolling over into the facing. So you basically don't see the seam and it keeps the facing inside. So we do also do a little bit of catch stitching as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna do the hem as well. I also need to overlock the hem actually, but I'm just going to press it now because I've got the iron here. So the hem is four centimeters. So again, if you're not sure what four centimeters looks like, usually I would definitely have a tape measure, but because of the check on this, I can just use that to get me to get this straight. The reason why we do a four centimeter hem on something like this is just to give it a little bit more weight so that it hangs better. I'm just gonna do it evenly on this side. Ok, 
okay so that's now done what I'm going to do is just overlock that bottom edge and let's turn this back so I'll just overlock this bottom edge now um, and if you don't have an overlocker then you can just zigzag this shave a little bit off it's not the end of the world um, if you haven't yet pressed it up though and you shave a bit off just take note of how much you've shaved off in case you're sort of going to alter your hem length obviously as well if you want to try on at this stage and check that you're happy with the length and whether you want to take it off anymore because that might mean you have to unpick and, and re-stitch that slit in a little going to do it in one continuous seam. Blah, 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 pivoting. Yes, we're going to do it in one continuous seam. So, we suggest that you do chalk it in. Um, so you've got a line if you want to. What we're going to aim for is the stitching at the side seam. So it goes like that. So you're going to come angle down and then down into the hem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold that in and then the hem goes up over that side slit. And then I'm going to pin that in place. And then the same here. Fold that in, pin that in place. So just do that around all of your edges. Okay, so I don't have a, let me get rid of my pen. Yes, it's here. I'm just going to mark those little points in because that will be the thing that I want to have nice and even. But if you wanted to, um, to draw also this sort of straight bits in as well, then you can do that. So I'm just kind of drawing them out to the width that I'm going to do them, which is about 2.5 centimetres. I think that's what we say here as well. Du, du, du. Yeah, 2.5 centimetres. So those angle out to 2.5 centimetres. Got one on that side and again there which is why we need more fabric behind here so that we can keep that distance um, if you end up though shorting in it and then having to use your actual normal seam allowance higher up you can just make those narrower it's not the end of the world so we're going to start at one of those side seams right on where the side seam is little reverse and then we're going to come out to our 2.5 marker point needle in pivot and you can check that you've got your 2.5 marker point when you pivot because you'll then be um, lined up there Here at the hem again, 
Don't worry about this extra little bit. We're going to hand stitch that away. Just going to do a little bit more. It's not quite enough. And away we go along the hem. So find your guide point on the uh, machine for your hem. course you can hand stitch your hem if you don't like a top stitched hem then you don't have to have one you can hand stitch one you can hand stitch the whole thing you can hand stitch your side slits as well so coming up to the next side slit and I need to stop again 2.5 centimeters or an inch pivot again and coming up and finishing actually we could just do keep going and pivoting round that would be nice pivoting on that seam basically and then coming back down the same angle down the other side center two and a half centimeters or an inch pivoting lots of pivoting again down the side now we're on the hem coming up the other side of the hem we're almost there guys zoned out <laughs> we've got to pivot let's just go back to there I'll unpick that bit later pivot that's not quite right let's just go forwards again I feel like I can just hear myself keep my pivot it's like that episode of friends so for pivoting so we last up at the last side slit, last angle at 2.5, pivoting and up to that middle seam. And we are done. That is the hem now finished. Um, let me show you if you can see how it looks there. Hem is now done. Dress is essentially sewn. The last thing we need to do is the uh, channel. So let's do that because it'd be a shame not to do that when we're really close to the end and then we've completely done it and you'll be able to use this as a reference to see the whole thing. So I've already measured this round my waist. Um, the cut is an inch elastic and I've got a safety pin on the um, end. And I'm gonna find that hole I thought, and I'm going to thread that through and I'll talk to you about the elastic measuring as I go through. So sometimes in patterns we give you lengths of elastic if it's relevant. Other times it's just really what feels comfortable to you. So I like that sense of feeling really knit in. Obviously it's still comfortable. I can eat in this dress if that's important. But I might like it tighter than what you might like. I don't know. Um, but what you um, need to do is tie the elastic round your waist not tie it hold it around your waist and pin it almost and then just check that you can feel like you've got enough movement and you're comfortable and then um, what you can do is um, you need to just add enough for an overlap so you need to be able to overlap it <laughs> um, you need to overlap it so that you can close it you also need to sometimes I do this and I 
I'm not going to do that because then I can't talk. But if I was here on my own, I'd put the end of the elastic in my mouth to stop me from pulling that all the way through. I could make loads of these for the sew off. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Then, because I didn't, what did I say I'd make 10 in 24 hours? I did not. I could make 10 Unas though. Definitely. I'm starting to, starting to be a bit naughty and starting to twist, so I'm just trying to make it behave a bit better. Don't be naughty, Mr. Elastic, and twist. Don't worry if it's a bit more bunched up at one end and it's not yet kind of gathering at the other. We can sort that out at the end. Just get it round. You will need a sizeable safety pin because if you use a really tiddly safety pin with elastic this thick, it's just not going to be strong enough. Um, and it will up, you'll often find that it just, it's a real pain and it just doesn't, um, doesn't thread through. It's always a bit fiddly um, around the seam allowances at the side seams because it can get caught behind the seam allowance and the safety pin can't get through. So you sometimes need to sort of feel and roll it so that you get the safety pin through those bits. Right, we are now fully through. So I'm now gonna overlap that. So I've overlapped that by two centimeters on either side of the um, elastic. I'm gonna pop it onto a zigzag and I'm gonna zigzag one side and then the other side. So I'm zigzagging sort of over the edge of the elastic. I always go back and I reverse all the way back up to the other side of the elastic just so it's super strong I mean very annoying if it you know that comes undone so then I'm flipping it so I can see the other raw side of the elastic and I'm going to do the same on that side and all the way back again it's really really strong Yeah, so then we need to feed that in. And this is when you can adjust the elastic in there. So it's a little bit more evenly distributed, the gathers. You might even find that you'll need to fiddle around with it once it's on you a bit for the first time. And then all we've got to do is close this gap. Now this is a, another little fiddly bit because obviously the elastic's in there and it's being a bit, you know, it's, it's a bit tricky. We, we don't want to catch that elastic in. So you move the elastic out the way and then you just put a pin in and then you could put your edge stitch foot on but I'm going to not and just do this little bit without it by eye. I'll just get my needle back into the middle position. Um, and there. I just want to make sure I'm following exactly the same line. So if you start where the stitching ends where you left that gap do a little reverse and you've got to really make sure you've not got dress or strap in the way just for this little section and you need to make sure you're also your elastic is definitely pushed over and there should be enough room in the channel for that to happen and then you should meet in exactly the same position the stitching on the other side make sure you reverse tuck up these threads off because I've got a lot of threads on here from when I was doing the channel and I didn't cut them off. There we go. 17, 80, 80 minutes, but we're going to take five minutes off. 75 minutes with chatting. Here is a complete, absolutely complete dress, the Una dress. That's how easy it is to make, guys. Oh, I am going to now have a nice big cup of tea and some lunch. Thank you so much for staying with me through such a long sew along. Wow, and thanks to Jemima as well, who stayed online throughout as well and answered questions. It was really good fun, that. Oh, I'm really chuffed. Um, I will no doubt keep an eye on at least the comfort because I'll be putting wearing this definitely over the next few days. So um, 
yeah watch me on there to see it finished all right guys i will see you very soon thanks again oh don't forget to like and subscribe great bye